This time on House of Duelists, what you've been waiting for, we unveiled a new project car for the channel, so stay tuned. What is up, you two? Welcome back to the House of Duelists. Today is the day that I am so excited to get to show you guys the new project, the new family member of House of Duelists here. So we're gonna bring in a new car into the garage um, and we're gonna be working on it. And I can't wait to show you guys. So if you've been watching me on social media or if you just watch on Facebook, I did post a couple little hints. Um, one of them was a picture of the car under its cover um, sitting outside before I brought it home and uh, it was raining and all that stuff on it. And uh, a lot of you guys had a pretty good eye. Another thing I put out there on Instagram was a picture of the dash cluster. The dash cluster itself gives a lot of clues. Um, Obviously, obvious reasons are the obvious clue would be the year ranging from your 86 under, which is a completely different dash style than your 87 and up, 87 93 dash style. So that's an obvious clue. But even on that, it, on it itself, um, just on the typeface and on the color of the gauges gives you another clue. And on the top speed and the miles per hour also gives you another clue. And then I strategically kind of stuck in there. Um, right on the bottom of the tachometer where you've got the selector for 4, 6, or 8 to be what engine is in this car. And a lot of you were smart enough to see what it was on. So that's cool. So if you saw that, you have a pretty good idea. At least it narrowed it down um, to the car. Or to the year range and the type of car that it is. So that's cool. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to the North Texas Fox Body Club. I want to give a special shout out to Jeremy Morris at the Reaper Garage. If it wasn't for you, Jeremy, this would not be in my possession. So thank you for taking care of me. Thanks for taking care of all of us at North Texas Fox Body Club and keep doing what you're doing. And guys, if you're out in this area, if you're in the Dallas Fourth area, the North Texas area, please go see Jeremy for all things Mustang. He is 100% full shop of nothing but Fox Body Restoration. He can do everything, anything for you that you need. Um, so he is the Mustang go-to guy in the area. So look up Reaper Garage. If you don't know what it is, hit me up. I'll be happy to share his contact information if you need some work done in the area. He'll be happy to do it for you. Thank you. So before I unveil it, four years ago, almost to the date, October 25th, 2016, we brought home this 86 here. And if you guys go back and watch the series, first off, thank you so much for sticking with me for these four years. It's definitely just now getting started, I feel. Um, go back, though, if, you, if you're new to the channel, go back. Now, now just ignore the, uh, the bad video quality, but definitely go back and check out the 86 and see how it was and the kind of progress we made on it. Now, now the 86 is far from done. We're not giving up on it. Definitely not going to get rid of this car. This car is going to take priority still uh, next to my Trino back here, but this is just something I could not help myself getting. I had to get it. It came up for sale. Was not expecting to buy another car. Haven't really been anticipating for it, but um, anyways, I always keep an eye out for deals and if you find something you know if you if you think it's a good enough deal go ahead and grab it guys go ahead and grab it. these cars are good enough where you can go ahead and flip them so I just think it's really cool though that four years ago we bought this guy on October 25th here it is October 30th 2020 four years later and we're bringing home a new addition to the Fox family here in House of Doula let's check it out right now stop yapping Let's just do it. There it is. Yeah, check it out. This is a 1979 coupe, guys, and this car is clean. Wait till you see the details. Now look, keep an open mind. Yes, it looks like a grocery getter. Yes, it's a grandma car. I get it. I get it. But look how clean this girl is, man. This is being a <laughs> being a 40-year-old car. This thing has so much potential. Oh my gosh. I'll go into detail. It's not perfect, okay? I know what you're thinking. It's not a Cobra. Some of you, I you know, y'all mentioned maybe it was a Cobra or something like that. No, no, no. no nothing like that. 
Bear with me here, okay? All right, man. So this, the reason why I fell in love with this car is because how solid it was and how low miles it was. So this is a four-cylinder car, 1970, like I said, base model. So it's got a 2.3 liter uh, four-banger in it. It's got the 10-hole wheels, as you can see, of course. The car was originally white, and it looks like it has a pretty somewhat maybe recent paint job. I can't tell how old it is, but um, it has been resprayed into this kind of a silver color. It's a really nice color. And one of the reasons why I liked it is because the paint and body was pretty good on it. So that kind of saves me a lot of work we have to do in the long run. I, I'm not a fan of the stripes, so let's just get that out right now. <laughs> so just so you know, uh, these stripes have to go. I've already talked to Adam about getting the hood repainted and color matched uh, without the stripes. I'm just not a fan of the placement of the stripes. If they would have just put it here, that's fine, cool. But man, okay. Okay. Before I go into too much detail, um, you know, I, I guess because when I bought my 86, I'm, I'm, this car is in a lot, lot better shape in so many ways. But let me show, like, point out the little details here. Things like the bumper, okay? Look how absolutely solid it is. It's never been hit. Okay, this is still not faded. It's not turned, you know, orange and yellow. This is all still intact. It's still a little bit flexible. The grill is not broken. Look at the grill. Look at the grill. All right. The side, I mean, the side marker, the chrome is still good here. This is dirty. I haven't even washed this, guys. I washed it once. This, the chrome here on the headlight bezels is still good. I, I could polish this out. It's just dirty. See, it's not even pitted yet. The side markers, at least, I and mean, this looks new now. This one's busted up here, but this one looks there still. Even the tin holes, all the tin holes are in good shape except for one on this side has got a little bit of an issue. Okay, but man, as you walk around the car though, the places where these cars rust down through here and up to here and the floors on this car are solid. Okay. Now the trunk hatch lid is gonna go. <laughs> I am gonna probably get rid of the lid but guys, look at these tail light lenses, man. Look at these. This B wants something. He wants it on it too. Look at the shape of these lenses. They're not cracked. Guys, these are original. This is original lens, so. All right, all right. Hey, what do you see in the interior of this thing? So check out the interior. First, uh, look at the chrome. Look at the chrome on that door handle. The door handles, the lock. Look at easy door opens, okay? Like, this closes and opens so much better than my 86. Look at the. The bright trim on it like even being a cheap paint job somebody did a pretty good job masking this um, somebody took some time to paint the rear quarters black but the window trim is all intact here it's all in really good shape and wait until you see this interior man look at this 100 original completely untouched stock steering wheel no aftermarket stereo all the wiring is intact Nothing has been cut. Nothing's been frayed. Nothing's been installed. The carpet's original. I don't know what you're thinking. This is just torn. I'll show you the other side of the car in a second, but look at the door panels. Look at this, man. Dude, this is why I bought this car. The interior and just the shape of this entire car is just way too good to pass up. I don't care if it's a four cylinder because it's not going to be a four cylinder not much longer, but look at the back seat. Let me show you something. So it's got the high bucket, high buckets, obviously for 79 here. They would have had a shorter ones with the headrest as an option in the gear model, I think. But yeah, look, look at the back seat of this thing. It's like it's never been sat in. And check this out. So the uh, <laughs> these notches have a package tray back there. This is, has a premium stereo. So it's got four wheel or four stereo. Excuse me, four speaker stereo. And it's got the uh, cardboard still 100% in place. No water damage. There's no water damage here at all. Look at the headliner. Huh? <laughs> Dude, it's so clean. I'm almost out of breath like trying to talk to you guys about this right now. 
All right, here, check this out. Let's sit inside of it. Look at the gauges. So the only thing I did, I haven't, I, I vacuumed it. I haven't even put a cloth on it at all. I haven't wiped the windows, nothing. The window's not pitted. It's got one crack right here. Um, but the car is so, so stinking solid, man. Um, yeah, the stereo works. I mean, everything works on it. Um, AC does not work. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you why in a second here. The car does have one major flaw, and we'll get to that. Two flaws besides the engine, but we'll get to that too. But yeah, for right now, just just base in the interior. Look at this thing. Look at the door panels. Look at the passenger side. See how solid that is. Look at that, man. Open right up. Somebody spent some time putting a window tent. Apparently this B wants in here too. He's been bugging me all day. But man, check it out. Isn't that cool? And look at this. Look, we still have all the door panels here on the side of the door. Still have the Motocraft maintenance perform sticker. So check that out. And of course, it's got the uh, uh, the body type, everything. So this is a obviously a real 66B, which is a coupe or not. I don't know. The exterior paint color is a 9D, which is white. So this car is an original white car um, with a red interior. And has AC, so the options it would have come with probably is AC and the premium stereo, which is the four speakers. So whoever ordered this got a pretty simple Mustang. All right, guys, let me show you the body on it real quick here. So obviously it's not perfect, okay? And it's got some dings in it. Um, it's got some area on the door where somebody had slammed into something here and bent it, you know. Um, it's, it's got dings all over, really. I mean, it, it's not perfect. Somebody did exactly what they did with my '86, and they just Kind of did a quick and dirty paint job on it so is it good enough for me i think it is right now i haven't really decided if i'm going to repaint it or how far we're going to go with it yet i'll talk to y'all about that later but you can see that it's got kind of dings mostly on the doors just from people ding it just from you know the years of driving it so but look at the molding on it so the molding is still in shape and this is what's usually bent falling off it's getting a little bit like it's starting to see starts you know starting to see his day a little bit and starting to bend out a little bit but it's not it's not um completely falling off anything yet it's all intact and it's all here that's what's important too so yeah you can, a lot of times you'll see these starting to rust behind it as well so but yeah look at the body so check this out guys this is the most important thing this car oh we can see here come on in with me well i'll get this up on a lift so you can really see it but it is completely rust free look at it Look at look at it. Look at the pinch welts here on the body line. No one has crushed this yet with a jack. Okay, it's really rare. You can see there's a little dent up there, but it's really rare to see these not folding in from misuse of a jack. So everything underneath here is is completely solid, and there's signs of you know your normal surface rust that you would see on here. But dude, this thing is has no rust. Check out the roof. Almost no dents in it. None. Look at the roof. And this color really pops in sunlight. Hey guys, hey, check check this out. When I got the car, the trunk lock was was missing the key. So I had to drill it out. It has the original key that worked for the both doors and for the ignition, uh, but it didn't work for this one. And this one had you know has a separate key normally that did not come with the car. I've been lost. So I drilled it out, and I went ahead and picked up a replacement. So I got that replaced. That's one thing I fixed on without you guys. Sorry, my bad. But dude, check this out. So I could not wait to open the trunk to see what was in it. How long has it been closed? How long has this car just sat here? Let me show you everything I found here. This is kind of crazy. So first off, I opened it up and was like, holy crap, the, the carpet's still here. That's impressive. And then it was also impressive to see the shape of the floor and the lack of rust. No rust anywhere here solid all the way down to the quarter panels down there solid but I did find some memorabilia here which is a uh, dirty old Kmart ad and after looking through this guys this is actually kind of neat it really dates itself to the car <laughs> look yeah fertilizer 
you can get yourself a grill for 99 bucks, a sunbeam grill. Check this out. Spot and weed killer. I looked at this the other day with my wife, look at the lawnmowers. And the funny thing about this is, there's a, here we go, check this out. Commodore Games, 18 bucks. And I looked up Gore-Tec and the microchips release date was 1984. So this, has been sitting back here since 84. No one bothered to clean it. No one bothered to come through this trunk and throw it away. That tells you how untouched this car is. Found some newspapers from, oh gosh, I don't know. It's the Dallas Morning News from 2008. Check this out. I don't know why this was back here, but it is an ad for a new 84 fun car. Buick Skylark for $85.95. So it makes me wonder if they're looking to sell this car and get into an Isuzu or an 84 old 88 LS Brogham. Pretty neat that this is still in here for some reason. And other ads, but look, oh look, god dang. Look, all the sound editing still in place with the clips. It's all in place, man. So the sound editing's there. In fact, we looked, uh, when I was trying to get into the trunk, I lifted up the door. This is kind of funny. I lifted out the back seat, just assuming that I was gonna be able to, you know, crawl back there. But to my surprise, the bolt holding down the rear back was still in place. And um, all of the sound insulation was still in place underneath the cardboard a package tray cover, which means no one's ever taken that thing off. Or at least not to my knowledge. This car's never been touched, it's never been torn, no one's ever butchered it, no one's ever done anything to it, it hasn't been cut. 99% of these boxes you see guys are all going to be touched in some way or another. Um, and it's so cool to see one that's just painted, nothing else. But yeah, back to the body, so check this out. So it obviously is the original color, it still has a Sears warranty from, look at that, 81. Also, check this out. So the original floor jack, this got wet for me, by the way, I didn't let this dry. I let it sit out in the rain a little bit when I was working on the lock, but check this out. So underneath here is the original spare along with all your accessories and uh, some more old newspapers, but all the spare and jack and stuff is still there too. Red! So red. So red. So the package tray itself is rough and why I'm probably going to get rid of it. So I do plan mostly, most likely we're going to go ahead and just, you know, get this sanded down. It's got, you can see where it's starting to get some rust areas here. And this is what kind of concerns me is that the car was painted over when it was already starting to rust a little bit. Um, in this case it was, you know, flaking through and the paint was flaking off. But I don't know how old this paint job is and I know it's not that new. Well, I don't know that, but it doesn't seem to be that new. So that, that is, that's kind of a concern of mine is, you know, really what's the condition of the body from what I can tell. Just looking at the jams, looking at the underside, they love to rust here because your cows drain through here and they get clogged with leaves and crap and moisture gets clogged up in between here and they don't come out the drain hole. Same with your doors. Your doors gonna have drains holes here and here. So this is from water that gets on the back side of your window it runs down to the door and it's supposed to drain out if it doesn't this gets clogged with leaves and crud but look at this hey there you go tire information sticker so this door shuts better than the driver door okay it's in awesome shape man it really is so yeah Show you guys this here like I said nothing in here has been messed with the only thing is some of the gauges don't work and I'll show you that why in a second and I did go ahead and replace the cylinder here for the lock uh, because this one <laughs> it's kind of funny came out here and uh, I was like man this seems really loose turns out I can turn the ignition on and start the car turn the ignition on and start the car without a key so I fixed that. It's funny, I had this laying around. I actually had this in the garage. A neighbor gave it to me at some point. Um, ended up working perfectly for this car. Pulled the other one out. 
put this one in. It came with a new set of keys, so now the car's got three keys. It's got one for the ignition, one for the trunk, and now the original one for the doors. So, hey, it is what it is. At least you can't start it now without a key. But yeah, I mean, it works, the stereo works. That annoying buzzer's gotta go. This is unplugged. It's unplugged for a reason. It's funny um, to see one of these cars without a center console. Ford just put a ashtray here that is, again, never been smoked in. Look at that. Ashtray. Pretty neat. All right. Stripes gotta go. Stripes gotta go. But I mean, look at this grill. That's <laughs> so cool. This car is so cool. All right. There it is in all of its glory. It's 2.3 liter naturally aspirated powerhouse that you see here. You can also see the condition of, of, of the car in itself. Now my assumption is the majority of the car probably looked more like this and like that and like this before it was painted. So the car was pretty rough, but it's still all here. You still got the air conditioning sticker in place. You still have the, uh, you know, the cold fill fluid, um, but we have a gas leak. I can smell it, I can actually see it. Right now the car is 100% drivable. The only thing wrong with it is with the steering, it's literally missing the uh, rag joint completely. So you got all that play. So I got a new rag joint coming just to fix it. So you know you can drive it. And let my wife put around in it or something like that until we start working on it. Um, but this right here is another reason why I wanted to buy it, and it's because this is going to come out. We're going to coyote swap this, okay? I'm going to put a full tube frame on it, uh, suspension, K member, and we're going to put a coyote swap in this bad boy. That's the plan. So imagine if you will, okay? Just like this, leave the 10 holes, get the 10 by, uh, or the 15 by nine and a half, so they sell LMR, the wide ones in the back, put a 275 in the back, drop the car a good solid two inches, uh, maximum motorsport subframe connectors, put a K-member on it, tube their upper and lower control arms, probably gonna go ahead and do a full tube front end, all the way around, as long as I can retain somehow the uh, factory hood and latch. I want to keep the steel hood. We're not going to go any kind of fiberglass cowl. Keep 100% steel. 100% looking the way it is now except we're going to drop a Cody in this. Clean up the engine bay. Maybe even some Scott rod panels. Make it smooth. Make it look brand new underneath here. And uh, Cody. Because why not? It's going to look awesome. So that's it. Now that's the worst part of it. And it's not even that bad. Check out easy. This thing fires right up. That buzzer, man. Check this out. Also, this car does not have a neutral safety switch on the clutch, which is funny because it starts right up. And it doesn't seem to be one in the factory. Starts right up. I forgot to mention this car is manual brakes and manual steering. And this car is a whopping 2,500 pounds, I think. Is that was what it says on the sticker? It's titled at 2,600 pounds. I think that's heavy. <laughs> this car is stupid light. This is probably the single lightest Mustang you can get. Period. In the story. Because it's a four-cylinder. It's a coupe. It's a 79. It has no options. It is just a stripped, bare-bone Fox. Look how good it runs though. It runs great. Look at the gas tank. The gas tank doesn't have the cover on it like you guys like we're used to. This gas tank looks like it's either been replaced or it's just in really, really nice shape. But Button right along, man. Sweet. Like I said, all the lights work. The only thing that doesn't work on this car, the only thing that doesn't work is uh, the gauges. So, oh, and the AC. Yeah, I forgot to tell you about that. Rats. 
rats the single biggest problem with this car it's got rat damage um, mouse droppings or rat droppings it's got it in between the valley of the intake manifold that's not the bad part when I bought this car one of the first things you always do when you buy any old car especially a Fox is God dang it's beautiful out here today One of the things you always do, always, is take the cowl off, okay, and get inside and look at it to make sure it's not rusted through. This one is rusty. It's not rusted through, it's rusty. It had rats living it, which is really common for a vehicle that's been sitting, in this case, it's probably sat in a field, in a covered, probably in a covered lot in a field somewhere, is my guess, or in a garage, um, you know, old lady's house. Now, luckily, there's no rat damage interior so they never got inside, so all the wires underneath the dash, oops, all the wires underneath here, and just the general condition of the AC box, HVAC box, uh, the stereo, everything as far as wiring and condition in here goes is fine. What's not fine is they built a nest inside the cowl. And they built a nest all the way through here, all the way down here, and down into the blower motor. <laughs> so. I spent the first day when I brought it home um, pulling out mouse trap and, and nest stuff that was stuck in the cow. So I pulled all that crap out, vacuumed all of it up. We're going to get some Eastwood uh, rust encapsulator and coat the whole underside inside of the cow with it. But look at this dash. Oh my gosh. Look at it. Look at it. It's original. Dude, look at this thing. It's a survivor, man. This is a survivor. <laughs> Look at the headliner. This is such a cool car. The back seat. The foam is 100% intact. Oh, this is a Win Dixie. 1988. This is a Win Dixie receipt from 1988. So, there's no telling whose this car was, what kind of life it lived. But one thing is so true is that. Somebody took care of it for 40 years. So that is it. All right, guys, what do you think? There it is, huh? The Coyote Swap Sleeper, okay? That's it. All right, guys, I thought it'd be a proper way to end it by going ahead and pulling out the 86, letting them be seen side by side here. The two houses do the four eye projects we now have a hatch and a notch and um, it just tells you right here that stance is everything <laughs> because this car is so much lower and it looks look at that stance is everything man but here they are guys side by side so here we go So guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, listen, go on to Teespring and get yourself a house to do a t-shirt. These are rad. The quality is awesome. It helps me out just a tiny bit, but you're not getting a cheap shirt, I promise. Help support the channel. Help support the 4i Fox I love. And uh, go on and get you some, because I need all the help I can get with this build, man. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm also reaching out to some sponsors. I'm trying to get some sponsorships. I don't have any sponsorships officially. So I'm trying to reach out to some sponsors, help me out with this build, just to kind of help out with the budget on it. Uh, we'll talk about budget in a later video too. I want to let you guys know everything. Everything. I want to be 100% transparent um, about this vehicle. I didn't mention price. No. Yeah, I paid three grand for this car. So just to let you know, I'm 100% transparent. You guys may think it's a horrible deal or if it's a great deal. I don't know. You be the judge. You let me know. It's my money. So I paid three grand for that car, and I have zero regrets. I think I've got an awesome deal. It's a super solid starter. I can't wait to get to it. So listen, follow me on Instagram. Uh, make sure to subscribe because that does actually help me out and you get notifications on things to come and we do have a lot coming so we got a video coming up on this that we'll be doing um, work on the blower motor and pull out some of the you know, rat crap stuff so that'd be fun uh, we got TKO 600 going into the 86 here so that's going to be replacing the T5 in it and we can go bang shift the turbo car so that's going to be cool as well so we got more content coming stay tuned guys I hope you like this video hope you dig my new ride uh, we'll see you next time